four weeks and a couple of days. I just want to dive in there and just live in this bottle for a while. I don't think I'll fit. I was gonna say words that need to be bleeped out. It's that good. Chocolate covered cherry wine. So we're starting with Knudsen's Just Black Cherry. Everything here has been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization. I'm just gonna dump the juice into the container. You don't have to be prissy about it because a little aeration is a good thing right now, but too much splashing is a bad thing. I don't know why this one has a white cap, you know, it's a brown. They're the same stuff, I checked. By the way, the ingredients in this is juice from ripe whole black cherries, that's it. No ascorbic acids, no sulfites, eights, or oits, because that's, that's another one, benzoate. Most juices are like a 1.050, whoa. Most juices are. This one's 1 1.082. You know what that means? We don't even have to add sugar for this one. I was gonna shoot for like a 1.100, 1 but that's close enough. It's probably not very exciting watching me just dump these in. I have most of it in there. I have this other stuff here called Fermate O, yeast nutrient. It's important. We didn't used to use it. Now we do, for reasons. <laughs> Most musts really aren't all that nutrient rich. And this is juice. We don't really know what's in this. I mean, it's fresh juice and all, but what does that mean? You know, like, is there enough nutrient in there? We don't really know. This is 10 grams of Fermato in like, what is that, an ounce of water? I know when I dump this in here, it's just gonna stick to the sides and make a mess. So I can just take the last bit of juice. But wait, we still have other powders that we have to put in here. And that one would be oh, wine yeah. tannins. This is wine tannin. Now, because we're using juice, there's not gonna be a lot of tannins in there. The tannins usually come from the seeds, the stems, the leaves, and stuff like that. So because we don't have any of those, we're gonna add some wine tannin. It adds a little nice mouthfeel, give that puckering effect. And I have to go get your teaspoon back. I don't have a teaspoon. This is North Mountain wine tannin. They say to use a quarter to a half teaspoon per gallon. I'm gonna go with the half because I know in the past I've used a quarter and really wasn't quite enough. All right, so the last thing that we need to add, which I think he's gonna risk it, is our yeast. What are we using? We're using Lauben 71B. And this is a new package that we purchased directly from our local homebrew store so that hopefully it did not suffer from the heat issues that our previous yeast that we purchased from Amazon did. If you need to purchase your yeast from Amazon, try to get it during a cooler time of year. So that way as it's shipped through all the different packaging places it needs to be shipped to, it may still be viable once it gets to you. That's our story and we're sticking to it. We're not absolutely sure that that's what occurred, but it just seems like yeast that we got a couple of shipments of, we're no good. We're yeast that we had, we're all good. I'm using the whole packet. Yes, I know a packet does five gallons, but in this case, it's gonna do one gallon. The reason I like to use a whole packet is because it gives the colony the best chance to start. As you reduce the amount of yeast that you add, you are reducing the amount of genetic material available for the yeast to build a colony. This is my understanding of it. I am not a biologist. One thing that's important to know, the amount of yeast you put in does not change the amount of alcohol you create, okay? That, that has not, that's a myth. A lot of people seem to think that. The amount that we put in there is nothing because that's gonna multiply thousands of times over before this brew is finished. If you're curious as to what does constitute what your ABV or alcohol per volume is for your particular brew, it's a combination of the yeast you're using's alcohol tolerance and the fermentable sugars that they have available to consume. So what do we gotta do now? We're gonna put an airlock and a bung on this and then put it on a cookie sheet with raised edges because we don't know how excited this fermentation process is gonna be yet. So as she said, I'm gonna put a bung or a stopper in there and that has a hole drilled out in it for the airlock to fit in. Just like that, we have sanitizer fluid in. Did that just pop it out? It sure did. Yeah, see when they pop out like that, it means, well, your stopper's probably a little bit too big. So for that, we had a rubber band around here earlier. I'll uh, just look. grab a rubber band yeah. and we'll put it on. You know what? Let's get the rubber band. I think it's right there. Those are for the cords. Oh, okay. I'll get a new one. Just for S and G's, she uh, sanitized the rubber band. <laughs> it's going to be on the outside. I, there's right. no reason, but it's okay because you can never sanitize. Well, you can, you but can. you probably can't sanitize too much very easily. Let's say that. So here's how I do this. I go over the airlock, right? catch the front here with the flat part of the rubber band and then loop it around the handle. And that literally holds it into place, okay? And that's fine, that's all you really need. The airlock is there to keep flies and bacteria 
that could be in the air out of your brew. That's about it. So as long as there's a pretty good seal here, you're fine. And they also allow, which is probably even more importantly, for the fermentation gases to escape. Right. So that way you don't rupture your bottle. If you just leave it open, if this is a very active fermentation, some of your flavors will actually be blown off into the air, okay? An airlock, because it's very narrow, has to concentrate those, so some of that won't go out. That's a theory I'm working on, okay? It's just a theory, but I have to believe it. If you have a wide open thing, all this stuff's going out, yeah, you're gonna lose some, whereas with this, not so much. That's why, like a lot of beer makers especially, they want a less active fermentation. They actually want the fermentation to stay, mm -hmm. stay at a lower level so that aromatics don't get blown off. So I know what you're thinking. Hey guys, you got the cherry, but where's the chocolate? Oh, don't yeah. worry, because that comes later. Yeah, we'll show you that in um, about two seconds. It's been like six days. Did this finish or did it stop? Sitting at 1.012 from 1.082. So it went through 60 points of gravity. To me, that's slightly worrisome. So I'm gonna say this is not done and it's possible it's I still, still fermenting. See oh yeah, there's still bubbles. little bubbles coming up. So I don't think it's done. I think it just had a super active fermentation and now it's slowed down. 12 more points to go or so. They're done with their rave, and now they're sleepy. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pour that sample right back in because everything was sanitized. Put the airlock back on, put my note back on. We're gonna let it have that opportunity to prove itself and finish. And we'll see you in another week, maybe two weeks. So it's been a week. Let's see what it's doing now. Funny thing is, we were talking before we started this, and we said, do we even care if it's done? Because we're probably gonna end up sweet anyway. Yeah, so the answer is no, we don't. <laughs> and there's other reasons why we don't care, because we're gonna keep it under airlock anyway, and it's still sitting at 1.012. It's possible that there's some, like I know in um, pears, there's sorbitol, which is a non-fermentable sugar. I don't see 12 points of it though. That seems like a lot. So we're, we're gonna say okay. the you... yeast just couldn't do it. All right, do you see what Brian just did? Don't do that. What he just did, don't do that, because what we intend to do is rack this. We're still gonna. But because he poured that in there, he disturbed all that layer that was down there. I saw it coming all up, because there's a thick layer down there. Okay, there's two ways of solving that. But we're gonna rack this again anyway, so it's no big deal. Just, it's better to pour that sample into your destination. And see, this is why it's easier to homebrew without recording what you're doing. <laughs> it's gonna be a mess I'm gonna, I'm gonna rack it, but I'm not gonna be too prissy about it okay. um, in the bottom. How's that sound? That's fine. I just wanna leave enough room to put the Creole brew in there, so. The reason why Brian is hesitant about this is because our level comes up to here. Oh yeah, there's a ton of lees in here. And Seven. we don't know where that came from. From the cherry juice. Because it was just cherry juice. And it, yeah. But I don't wanna lose all of our product. So just put the jar on the table. We're gonna do this. Let's just muddle through. Do, do you want to rack it? Or, now that you I have other things. That, I'm going to put stuff in here and then I'm going to rack you're it. You're going to put stuff in here. Okay. Yep. All right. I have reasons. Okay. Okay. First. He has spoken. First, we have here some Madagascar vanilla beans. I have half of a bean. I always have half of stuff thing around because I use half for one thing and whatever. I throw a half a bean in there because we've learned that if you want to make something taste more chocolatey, you add vanilla to it. Because somehow vanilla is the opposite of chocolate, but it makes chocolate better. Don't ask me how that works. The alcohol in our brew is going to extract the vanilla from yeah. that vanilla bean, and we don't know at what rate. So we don't want to overdo it, because we can always add more, but we can't take it away. Right. This is Creo Brew. If you're not familiar, it is basically dark cacao. That's about it. You literally just steep it in water like you would coffee, and it makes a really, really nice beverage. I like drinking it, but I also like to use it in brews because it imparts a lovely dark chocolate flavor. I almost put it in here. We've had better luck with the Creo brew than we have with the cacao nibs. If you yes. can't get Creo brew, but you can get cacao nibs, then go ahead and use cacao nibs. I'm using six tablespoons of Creo brew. How did I arrive at that number? Well, in a previous episode, how many was that? Three? Yes. Okay. Let me finish this, then I'll talk. Four, five, now I can talk. In a previous recipe that we did, the dark chocolate pomegranate, we used a little bit of extract that we had, and then we used a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons of Creo brew right in the batch. Now I'm estimating that in our 
uh, extract that we had, we had probably about two more tablespoons in there. So that's where I'm getting that six from. I want a good chocolate flavor because, I mean, it's chocolate-covered cherries. It's not cherries with a chocolate back note. It's chocolate-covered cherries, right? So that's why we want a strong chocolate flavor. That's where the chocolate and the vanilla bean comes in. Now you might say, well, this is completely different because you didn't make an extract first. And you're right. But because we're adding an from. alcoholic beverage to our Creo brew, in a sense, we're creating an extract within our brew. And, right? and let's be honest, we didn't think six months ago we were going to make this today, so we didn't plan ahead and make one. We're right. Now we're going to rack this onto here. So now I can go pretty much up to here on the neck without too much worry. That's why I did it the way I did it, so we keep as much product as we can and lose a little bit of the lease along the way. This is kind of a mess. I'm not oh, sure if and this, this is like solid in here. Was it's, the best option, but hey, you know, you do what you got to do. <laughs> we did get a lot of the lease in here, but here's the thing: we have so much Creo brew in there that I'm really not all that worried about it. All that stuff that was stuck to the hose is going to stick to my spoon, uh, and I know this, but I have to mix this in or else it might not hydrate properly. So. And you got to be delicate because you don't want to oxygenate. Right. So you have all these things that you got to deal with. And welcome to the world of homebrew. That's the way it is. That said, the likelihood of oxygenation is pretty slim, even though some people will say that's way too much headspace and I'm stirring it up. I understand. In beer brewing, oxygenation is a much more serious problem than it is in wine and mead making. I got most of it off. Look at that. Look at you. All right. All right. See that? Now, because we do have stuff floating on the top, we are going to keep an eye on this. Yeah. Uh, we might give it a gentle swirling yep. motion. You want to make sure that stays wet so we don't get mold. We're hoping that it's going to absorb enough of the moisture and start settling down and that way we won't have to worry about it so much. But what are we going to do with this now? We're going to let it sit. And keep an eye on it. Maybe two. It's been a week. And so now it is time for us to taste it to see if we have reached the chocolatiness that we were looking for. It smells like cordial cherries. I just want to dive in there and just live in this bottle for a while. I don't think it'll fit. On the smell, it is. I look it's at that cordial. color. Yep. Oh, it's, it's, just... it's a cherry cordial. Wow. I, I'm going to let you go first. I really hope the flavor meets that. Now, this is 1.012. Um, we don't know if we're going to sweeten this more or not. Vanilla's not coming through in the nose. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to let it sit longer and then sweeten later? Or do you think it's extracted enough? Uh, I'm thinking... Maybe let it sit a little bit longer. What's the ABV on this? 1.082 to start, minus 1.012. Gives us 70 points used, 0 0.07 gravity, times 135. It's about 9.5%. Yeah, I think because of that, letting it sit longer is going to help. The reason why I asked about the ABV is because a higher ABV beverage is going to extract things from like chocolate or whatever you're trying to extract from quicker than something with a lower ABV. So because this is right on the cusp of the 10, I'm thinking it doesn't seem like it is as chocolatey as my memory is of our chocolate pomegranate, and I want it to get to that point, so maybe more time is necessary. I also know, and I know Brian is thinking about this, that adding some sweetness may fool the mind and go, oh, chocolate is sweet, but chocolate's also bitter, so who knows? It's not where my brain's going. Where's your brain going? Where's the cherry? It's, it's the whiny note. I'm afraid of losing the cherry. This is probably going to be a Derricka brew. We can compromise. How so? We can take a sample and just put some sugar in our sample, stir it up and see, does that make it pop? If it does, then we know where to go. Okay, so first, some sugar. How much? That's always the question. I'm just gonna put in a little bit. So right now the concern is, um, and we, we talked a little bit before I came back with this stuff, that the cherry flavor may get lost if we just extract more chocolate. But there's also the idea that sugar can make the cherry flavor pop more. So maybe extraction and sugar is the answer. I also think it needs a little more vanilla. I got some vanilla extract here. We're gonna test both theories. If you've ever had the commercial uh, store-bought chocolate wine, it's the one with the windmill on it. I don't remember what it's called. This kind of tastes like that. So it tastes like chocolate, but it tastes like wine that has chocolate in it. So this this tastes like wine with chocolate, but it doesn't necessarily yeah. read cherry. And that's what Brian's concern right. was. And I agree with that. 
It brought the fruitiness back mm -hmm. quite a bit. It's more like a deep fruit, like a dark cherry rather than a, which I think they were dark cherries. I'm pretty happy with the sweetness level that I added there. Too bad I can't really calculate it. When you let these things sit mellow, you know, the flavors will change too. There's easier ways to dissolve sugar. I know, simple syrup, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, We but... don't have any prepared. We're filming right now, so. And I, I only need a little tiny bit. <laughs> dissolve, come on. There's people waiting for you. All right, are you gonna put some vanilla in there? I'm putting some vanilla. I had to gonna, get the, I had to get. You're gonna have to mix the vanilla too. That's gonna take half a second. Oh boy. I'm gonna let you have first sip. Pretty darn nice though. Yep. Oh, ooh. It's like a jammy uh, berry at the end. Yep. Ooh, I like that. It's kind of like, you know, the cordial cherries, the chocolate covered cherries that we're replicating. You bite into it and you get the dark chocolate, right? And then you, you get the squishy cherry in the middle and you get the, the juice from it. That's what I'm getting on this. It's like candy. It's actually working. Candy, candy, candy. Which is probably a really good thing that oh. this is not stupid high on the ABV. I was wondering if we should fortify it slightly. I think that would be a bad idea. <laughs> we're going to let this extract further. And then next time around, we're going to sweeten. Oh, we're done? Why? If if our task just showed us that it just needs sweetening and more uh, vanilla, why would we let it extract further? Because I don't know. That was your suggestion. And I don't like saying no to you. We've we've changed our, our concept by doing our test. That was the oh. whole point of our test. So you're saying we have to rack this now? I have to say we have to rack that now. If you watched our one micron filtering test and how that really didn't work out very well, we're going to find out if it filters Creo Bro. Creo Bro. And I think Can the answer it it? is going to be yes. But you know what you have to do? I have to get the pitcher. You have to find another one of these. All right, so we sanitized a new wide gallon, one gallon, wide mouth, one gallon fermenter. That. Yeah. And we also got our filter back out and sanitized that as well. Now, because this is the one micron, it does retain moisture quite readily. So yeah, I, I squeezed it out, Brian squeezed it out. We're all squeezing it out. That sounds really bad. My apologies. So this Watch is- Watch it, comment section. This is what we're going to use to uh, put our auto siphon into, so that way any of those little Creo brew bits that get sucked up by the auto siphon, hopefully will not pass through the so-called so one micron filtration bag. All right, I want to say something here. This filter sock thing, it's garbage. Seriously, it's garbage. Throw it away, don't get one. It made siphoning that such a nightmare. There's plenty of stuff in here and I'm sure it did a decent job of filtering, but you know what? Cheesecloth would have worked about half the time. It took me half an hour to rack this. Throw it away. To continue on what was Brian was saying, yeah, our technique of using that filter didn't work we would not recommend zero stars. I believe the the method that we used for the chocolate covered pomegranate that was a similarly chocolated with Creo Brew situation is that we covered the intake portion of the auto siphon with cheesecloth, thus leaving the Creo Brew in the... Or use a bag like this. Or use a bag, yeah, whatever. But besides that, we also have copious amounts of headspace and we've had a lot of people question about this. And I always say in the comments when I answer them, to use glass marbles. And what I mean are these. Glass marbles. They need to be food grade because marbles they're going in, in here. But you wanna contain your marbles because if you just start dunking marbles in there, you're probably- Food grade? Yeah, I believe these are the marbles used for uh, blind baking when you- Oh, wow, pie. okay, okay. I just um, didn't realize what's the difference of food grade there, marbles. There are different glass types and some oh. glass, like if you get the fancy colored ones, may actually contain lead. So you want to avoid those. The clear glass ones I think are universally lead free, but if you can find something that actually says it's lead free, then that's probably what you want to use in your brew. Why do I want to see like the Saturday morning special? The more you know. <laughs> I didn't know that. I hadn't actually considered it. I'm like, glass is glass, but no, that makes sense. All right, so dunking your glass marbles in star sand makes them sanitary so they can add them to your brew. But even then you don't want to just dump them in here because you may shatter your vessel and be sad. So we put ours in a sanitized brew bag. And now we're going to very gently, see, lower them into our brew, limiting our headspace. That actually worked pretty well. 
without breaking it. We probably could have put a little bit more, they but prob- that's 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 an acceptable yeah, amount of headspace. It's, it's okay. It's at the curve, so yeah, we yeah. we would have liked to gone a little bit higher, like in here ish maybe. Mm-hmm. But and I know, made sure it's completely under the liquid, so we're safe. We we had Don't some need that one. We got this one. We had some angst because of the stupid bag. That stupid filter. <laughs> Okay, so it's been about a week since we racked and filtered this, and some weird stuff happened. There's weird things against the side of the jar. I pull it out, and I was like... We had serious concerns. We were like, oh, no, what did we do? Let me let me show you what we're talking about here. Okay, so when you're looking at the side of this, do you see that, like, whitish area just in there? It looks kind of almost slimy and weird. And then you come around this side, and there's more of it. Well... We were both wondering, what the heck is that? Until I pulled a light up. I don't know how well you can really see it here, but it's the bag with the marbles in it. I've been looking at that for like three or four days in the fermentation station going, what are we gonna do about that? I don't know what that is. Put a light on it and I can totally see the- The mesh of like, the bag. There's like, texture. Uh, it's it's a mesh bag. <laughs> Why did we put a bag? Oh yeah, the marbles. Headspace. Yeah, it's for headspace. It's just time to rack it. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those days, folks. We're all discombobulated because of that weird bag. That weird stuff on the side of the fermenter. <laughs> Mold can't grow down there. What is down there? There's like something living, but it wasn't moving. That's what got me. It's like it wasn't getting bigger. It just suddenly appeared You're one day. You're looking for tentacles and an eyeball. Yeah, I was expecting it to wink at me, and it didn't. We don't have a full gallon, so this is a little bit um, difficult because we have less than a gallon. So we don't even have three liters, but we do have a three liter bottle. The pores get bigger as more stuff gets added. Okay, first off, the chocolate smell is there. It was just a first impression. Very chocolatey. Um, I have to smell it again to really be sure. I know there's a fruit note there, but I want to make sure. Oh yeah, chocolate cherry. It even could pass for chocolate raspberry on the smell. Mm, mm-hmm. Not bad, needs some sweetness. Sweet. I'll start with probably just under, like a little over a quarter pound maybe, and we'll add a, add more as needed. I know we explain this in every video when we do sweetening, but the reason we sweeten this way is because this way it comes out to taste rather than via some mechanical means that tells us how it should be. Instead, we're adding enough sugar or sweetener until it tastes the way we want it. Just seems to make more sense to me. In this way too, if you're making this and you don't like it as sweet as we do, you stop sooner. (laughs) If you like it sweeter than we do, you put more. And we're gonna give you the final reading, so that way, no matter what batch size you're making, you can sweeten it to that level. So that way, like, a pound of sugar means nothing, because a pound of sugar in one gallon versus two gallons is completely different things, and that's the idea. We don't even have a gallon here, so all bets are off. It's just cats and dogs living together. Mass Mass hysteria. hysteria. We don't plan to say that, it just kinda happens. It still smells like chocolate. Isn't that amazing? Just that little bit of sweetness. Cherry, the cherry flavors are coming in. What do you think, a little bit more? Yeah, but not a tremendous not a lot, amount. No. I have it right here. May add extract and sugar. A little bit. Just just a tiniest bit. Half a teaspoon or so. Doesn't sound like much, but vanilla is kind of a strong flavor. So it did actually change it slightly. But it's not, not tremendously different. Okay. I'm going to call this ready. Done. Okay, so the only thing that we're going to do, we're going to end up pasteurizing this. Yes, we need to take a gravity reading so we can share our sweetness level. Um, I'm going to guess we are at like 1.026. Way off. 1.034. This is much sweeter than I thought it was. Do I I have your your pen? Sorry. Here. You stole my pen. It says Bry's pen. What are we going to do with this now? Well, we added a fermentable sugar and we used Lavin 71B. I believe, yeah, we're not yeah, to its alcohol. We're only at like 9%. Tolerance. So we need to stabilize our brew and our preferred method is pasteurization. So we're going to rack this into an appropriate vessel. And once Brian's done pouring, we can determine what vessel size that should be. Three liter ought to be okay-ish. Okay. It's a little less than a three liter. If you don't have a three liter bottle, Carlo Rossi used to, I don't know if they still do, yeah. make wine in three liter bottle sizes. They're actually wonderful little bottles. The airlocks just fit. You might need a rubber band to hold the bung in. So this is our cute little three liter bottle. Almost feel like we don't even need to bottle it from this. We can just drink it right out. 
<laughs> but it, it, it doesn't hold as much. But this way, we have less headroom. It's not still quite where I would like it to be, and being that this is 9%. But at least it's gone up the curve a little bit. So. Right. And there is some degassing going on, so should be fine. This is going to go over to the pasteurization the station. Or the pasteurizer. I like that. The pasteurizer. That is crucial. If we don't pasteurize this, it's probably going to re-ferment. Now, if you want your alcohol to be higher, you can totally do that. And then you can sweeten again and you can keep doing that until it finally stops. But we don't want to. Or you get tired and pasteurize. But we don't want to do that. We want it to be 9%. Sweet. Pasteurize. We'll see you in two seconds. Okay, so it's been another week and now it's time to give a taste on this in our Initial judgment. That's right. It's judgment day. <laughs> Notice we're using Glen Cairns for reasons. So this color, it is like dark, it, dark, dark. It's like, you know, the super black that no light can penetrate. That's what this is now. Yeah. I, I put it up to the light. No light is going to pass through that beverage. That is. It's beautiful though. It's actually quite clear. Cause when you get to like the edges where you can see, yeah. it's clear. It's, That's crystal clear. Yeah. I mean, I can sort of see my finger through it. It so. is beautiful. Yeah. It, it no warms. clarifiers, no the, nothing. The dark depths of my heart are happy. On the smell, Ooh. it is chocolate cherry. Chocolate, it's dark chocolate covered cherries. Ah, uh, this is another Derek a swimming pool beverage. How old is this? We started this what day? We started this 928. And today is 11 1. So this is not even five weeks old. <laughs> Four weeks and a couple of days. Ah, uh, that smell I'm, I'm alone going in. is I'm incredible. Going in. All right, you do that. This is the kind of thing that you can sit and just smell this and enjoy it. Very aromatic. I definitely get the dark chocolate. I get the, the sweetness of the cherries coming through. That is dark chocolate covered cherry it wine. Is, that is spectacularly good. I was yeah. gonna say words. Say words. <laughs> I was gonna say words that need to be bleeped out. It's that good. Okay, this is thick. It's rich. It's viscous. It's mouth filling. It's sweet, but it's not as sweet as you would think 1.034 should taste. I think the dark chocolate, because of the bitter flavors of dark chocolate, yeah. mixed with the tartness of the cherry, right. is balancing that sweetness level. And I think if it was too sweet, it would detract from the cherry and the chocolate. Mouthfeel is fantastic. It's like creamy. But the flavors meld so perfectly. Okay, so let's talk about this. Repeatability, how easy would this be for somebody to do it was cherry juice and wine tan and, I mean, there's there's some ingredients here, okay? And there's a little bit of time involved. Yeah, but I don't The Creo think... brew extraction, you gotta keep an eye on. I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half. I would too. I think it's pretty easy stuff. Um, now on to the enjoyment, bias, our actual, what we think of it. For this, she wants more. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was thinking about it too. Let me explain how I score it while we get more. So, we go one through 10 with the occasional 11. 11 is just reserved for those things that are absolutely, unbelievably, you're just gonna get a whole pour. How's that? Are you really gonna complain? I don't think so. A whole pour, it's what, two ounces? It's one and a half ounces. That's a whole baster full is one and a half ounces. Uh, so a one is basically something I would probably dump out. And five would be like, yeah, I'd drink it if somebody poured it for me or if I saw it on the shelf, maybe. A 10 is the thing that I was thinking of that I wanted to go get. And all the numbers in between are kind of like varying levels of those things. So those are my cutoffs, just to give you an idea. That aroma, man, that's just... Yeah. We talk about balance. And when we talk about balance, we mean like the acid balance, the sweetness balance, and then tannins. All those things play together. They make like this... Um, there's a number missing from my list. What's that number? If you could take care of it since you were the man of the numbers. What is our rough guide for ABV on this bad boy? I got Japan. I'll get back to the balance in a second since I was interrupted. 9.45, so let's go with 9%. Now, if anybody asks why I rounded down, it's probably safer to round down. I mean, does it really matter? We did add a little bit of sugar. We, you know, we diluted it ever so slightly with those things. So yeah, it's probably around 9%, but within a percent or two, doesn't really matter to me. Back to balance. Sweetness, acidity level, and tannins, generally for my balancing act, if you will. So going off of those three things, this has just the right amount of tannins to it. It's just perfect. And then, and I think the, the chocolate kind of did that. And then we have the acids and we did 
No, we didn't add any acid to this. I think it's the, cherry. the cherries have just enough acidic bite. The, actually, the uh, chocolate has acids too. So they gave it that nice backbone of flavors. And then we sweetened it to balance those two with the sweetness. It, I'm, I'm being all awkward and weird, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. We done good. I have a score. Do you have a score? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, ten. ten. Absolutely. This is a 10. When we set out to do this, I was hoping this would be this good. It really did come through. I'm, I'm impressed. Make this one do what we did. Don't try to substitute things. Don't try to reinvent it. It came out a 10. Do it the way we did the first time. If you prefer things differently, change it up for the next time. That's the best advice I could give. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.